This lecture will look at the health impacts of air pollution, how we measure it, how it affects different people. Um, this is a graphic from the World Health Organization estimating 7 million people die prematurely every year from air pollution, both household, which is also known as indoor air pollution, and outdoor air pollution. Um, you know, household air pollution can also contribute to outdoor air pollution, but what we mean is, is, is pollution that's, that's caused inside the household, usually by burning, um, uh, burning biomass on open stoves like this. Um, and the, the, the main, uh, Consequence, so, so a third of those uh, premature deaths are from heart disease, um, and about a fifth from pneumonia and from strokes, and another uh, fifth from um, COPD. So again, anything affecting the heart and the lungs, uh, particulate matter, basically... Uh, negatively affects how the heart and how the lungs work. Um, reiterating what I said in the last lecture, uh, air pollution is the, if I can get the slides working, the fourth largest overall risk to health in the world. Um, it's an ongoing health crisis in many parts of the world, but actually the awareness even among the medical community isn't uh, very high, uh, causing one in nine deaths worldwide and causes and cures to be found in the energy sector. That's why I'm talking about this in a sustainable energy course. Um, here we talk a little bit more about the emissions to impact uh, chain. So the relationship between the sources and the concentrations is not straightforward. It's a complicated task to measure and assess. Primary pollutants react in the atmosphere to create secondary PM and ozone, for example, some of the sulfur dioxide and some of the NOx released are converted into secondary PM in the atmosphere. And um, when there's heat and light, nitrogen oxide can react with methane, actually, and other uh, uh, VOCs or carbon monoxide to form uh, ozone, which is another form of pollutant. And the impact of pollution depends on the location and height, so like the stack and height of the chimney of emissions and the distribution of the population. That's especially important for primary pollutions, especially particulate matter. When factories and power plants are close to population centres, they have a much bigger impact when they they can be moved further to, from population centres. But by contrast, vehicles they're close; they can't you can't remove vehicles from population centres, um, or you, you you can try if you want to uh, remove um, cars from city centres, which is one of the main reasons why uh, why there's a move to remove cars from city centres. Um, there's a there's a big move to to stop pe uh, parents from dropping their kids to school, especially idling outside the school gates. That's a very big cause of air pollution. Um, and and cars idling in traffic, uh, it's not just a, an annoyance, uh, time waste uh, uh, cause of emissions. It's also um, a huge cause of air pollution as well. Um, I talked about acidification of lakes and particulate matter uh, episodes in Paris in 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 uh, in, in previous. Um, uh, lecture. Um, for example, one kilo of uh, PM 2.5 emitted by cars in Paris is two orders of magnitude greater than the same kilo emitted from a toll stack in a rural zone. So if you're regulating emissions, you need to focus on uh, on, on areas where there's concentrations and, uh, and, and, and when it's close to population centres. So 54% of the global population live in urban centres and that is increasing. So previously, for example, um, uh, household air pollution was a focus in rural areas, but with a lot of people from in developing countries moving to uh, cities and still not having access to modern fuels for cooking, then that household air pollution becomes a lot more of a, a sort of a, a local area pollution. You know, the, the, the smoke from fires actually becomes an outdoor air pollution issue as well. So that urban urban development is is very important. The WHO, the World Health Organization, sets air quality guidelines, um, and that provides this international reference point for thresholds of concentrations of air pollutants in air and health risks. Uh, most urban areas fail to meet these air quality guidelines. Nearly eighty percent of the population living in urban areas that that do monitor air quality are breathing air that doesn't comply with the WHO air quality guidelines. So this is a benchmark that we can that we can assess um, how we're doing and, and air pollutant concentrations in urban areas. Around 90% of urban Europeans are exposed sometimes to levels of air pollutants exceeding WHO guidelines. Um, but less than 10% of Europeans live in cities where air pollution levels exceed the EU's own air quality standards. The EU has its own quali air quality standards and they're less stringent than the WHO. So which guidelines you follow is, is important. Um, the situation in, in urban areas is acute in emerging economies. Sometimes you get air pollution that's literally off the scale that, you know, when there's a colour code, it goes 
beyond uh, the pollution goes far beyond the worst um, pollutant. The, you, know, you get episodes in the winter in India and China where um, airports are shut down because um, the the um, because airplanes can't land in such dense air pollution. Um, you get just schools shut down. You get orders for people to stay in, indoors. It has a huge, huge uh, consequences for uh, not just health, but the economy as well. Here is a chart again from uh, taken from that IEA report based on WHO and World Bank data, uh, which shows um, different concentrations in terms of micrograms per meter cube. So you take a cubic meter of air and how many micrograms of the air pollutant are in there. That's the concentration uh, unit that they use in different urban areas. Uh, blue here is high income, and you can see that higher income areas typically have um, have levels of air pollution that are. Um, that are closer to the WHO guidelines. Um, there's not such a strong correlation between the size of a city. So here are cities over here with uh, with up to 25, 20 to 25 million inhabitants. But there are just as many cities uh, with uh, with low populations, um, less than 5 million inhabitants, which, um, which have high air pollution problems as well. Uh, so the blue here are high income countries. New York is fairly good. Um, you know, Paris is 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 um, um, worse than New York, uh, and then you have some upper upper middle um, uh, income countries, including China here in the dark, and here you have lots of you know um, cities around the five million mark which have um, air pollution measured in many many times the um, the level uh, of of WHO guidelines um for 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 pm um and then you get um you get many cities as well uh, in india lower or lower middle income countries and, and in africa which have um which have also very very high levels of of air pollu pollution going through some of the health impacts um pm is linked to lung cancer copd and heart diseases Pneumonia is a single big, biggest killer of children below five years of age in the world. Uh, there's one million premature deaths of children, of babies and children under five uh, every year. And half of those are caused by household air pollution. Can you imagine half a million babies and children die every year because they're exposed to smoke uh, and the effect on uh, on 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 them actually uh, before they're born uh, in terms of their development when they're in the when they're in the womb and everything is, is also very actually important. Um, air pollution can also contribute to low birth weight, uh, as, as I just mentioned, tuberculosis, cataracts, throat cancers, um, ozone, um, NOx and sulfur dioxide are also linked to asthma, reduction of lung function, lung disease. Um, so it's not just smoking or bad health and bad diets. Um, the effects of air pollution can can kind of range from both the short term, a few hours or a few days, for example, you know, bad asthma attack or something, or they can be chronic, a long term uh, exposure to air pollution uh, over many years. Um, as I said, the small PM emissions, even at very low concentrates, penetrate deep into the lungs and can have effect on the whole body function. They can enter the bloodstream uh, and, and, and affect how all of the organs work. And the effects of air pollutions can range from mild discomfort, you know, sore throat or something like that to death, you know, that in, in, uh, if you've got high concentration of, of carbon monoxide, for example, you can just die in your sleep. Um, uh, and various indicators are used to measure those impacts. But mortality is the overall concern. Mortality is the premature deaths. Uh, so the number of premature deaths, that is the number of deaths that have been attributable to a given risk factor. Um, and considered to have been preventable if the risk had been eliminated. So that is what we define as premature death. It's interesting, like, you know, we're all going to die. That's, that's one certainty. And, um, it's, it's, um, it's interesting for me how these, these health professions measure what is a premature death. But what that means is that, um, is that the death wouldn't have happened if that risk factor hadn't been there, um, regardless of age. There's another metric that's used called the years of life lost, YLL. So that will give, um, that will sort of say what the life expectancy of the person would have been. And let's say if they should have lived for, you know, 80 more years, if it was a baby who died, um, that would be 80 years of life lost if it's an older person and, you know, they lost, they, they, they sort of, their life was ended maybe one or two years, um, faster than expected, then it would be two, two years of life lost. Um, so this is weighted to take into account that that um, that younger people dying have a have a sort of lose more of their life uh, from air pollution. There's also dailies, which um, I'm a fan of. That's the um, disability adjusted 
uh, years of life lost. <laughs> that's, that's my, that's my surname. Um, uh, so that is, uh, kind of taking into account quality of life, uh, uh, as well. Um, here are the deaths attributable to household and outdoor air pollution in 2012, um, by country. So if you look at household air pollution, um, you have Africa there being 15% with China and India, uh, having, uh, the majority of, of household, uh, air pollution. You remember from the access lectures that, um, access to clean cooking, uh, is very, uh, very poor in these two countries. That's the, the that's the main thing. Um, uh, and, uh, but for outdoor air pollution, you have it more distributed to the rest of the world, uh, to other developing countries in Asia. Uh, this is North America, 1% from the EU, certain amount from, from Russia as well. If we look at the years of life lost due to air pollution, at the household level, about 139 million years of life lost outdoor, uh, around 83 million years of life lost. So even though they have approximately, you know, more roughly equal, um, um, uh, total premature deaths. I suppose household air pollution affects younger people more, so there's more years of life lost. Uh, and again, their uh, developing countries in Asia have a, have a big mortality. Africa, very big there from household lack of clean cooking access. And out to air pollution, it affects more countries. So about 4% of those come from the EU um, and 10% from other developing countries and um, North America. Uh, here is a selected mortality rate by country. So that means that literally the, the mortality rate is the annual deaths per 100,000 people. And, uh, in certain countries, uh, you know, you can have in excess of, of, of 200 deaths per 100,000 people every year, um, with, with, um, in, in countries with, with a lot of air pollution. And here it, there's various European countries here, for example, the Czech Republic around, uh, 60, uh, deaths per 100,000, um, population attributable to air pollution. There are also economic effects. Uh, ec there's economic valuation of losses. Um, for example, well, in, in, in one way through the cost of health impacts. So you can have a narrow, um, economical, uh, assessment of the value of a statistical life. This is why I think economics is known as the dismal science. Um, and this depends on national income, which can be seen as a very unequal, um, uh, kind of statistical measure of the value of a life lost. I mean, personally, I think that, um, you know, uh, a child dying in Ireland has the same value of their life as a child uh, dying in Africa. So I, th I think this, uh, you know, you can, you should take these statistical um, valuations with a pinch of salt. But if we, if we do um, uh, apply these kind of economic functions to uh, health losses in the European Union, the value of health impacts was estimated at 440 to 1.2 billion um, dollars in, in 2010. So that's, it's up nearly a trillion. So 1000 billion is a trillion dollars in 2010, uh, which is, which is absolutely massive and hidden. It's not in the country's budget. Uh, but when you take into account, you know, um, uh, people dying prematurely, uh, the cost to the health system and, uh, disabilities caused by air pollution, the, the cost is enormous. One study valued the adverse health impacts in the US from fossil fuel supply and power generation activities alone at over 160 billion in 2010. So that's just fossil fuel supply and power generation. That doesn't even take, take into account uh, burning at the household level or transport related pollution. Across the OECD, the road transport sector has been estimated to account for half of the total health related economic um, cost of outdoor air pollution. So the OECD is a club, club of around, uh, around 30 um, developed economies, rich, uh, rich countries club and road transport cost around uh, 865 billion in 2010. Absolutely massive. Again, in India, uh, around a cost of around 160 billion in 2009. There are also losses from agricultural yields. Uh, you, you don't even quantify the losses from, you know, nature, from acid rain eroding, uh, old monuments, from lakes becoming, um, acidified and, and, and the value of uh, fish and, and, and biodiversity loss as a result of air pollution. 